All right, welcome back to Sports Center. Here's the tale of the tape. Rookie Zion Williamson, 6'6, 284 pounds. Giannis, 6'11, 242 pounds. Now, one player is fully physically developed, the other could probably eat a couple more sandwiches, maybe a couple of protein shakes. But the, the number that counts is NBA mileage. And to this point, the Greek freak has that number on his odometer that Zion doesn't. It was the first meeting between the two stars Tuesday night. How close is Zion to becoming a true championship building number one player? It's our first take, last take of the day. I'm looking at him and I'm saying he's going to be a star. He's got star written all over him. He's got no choke in him. He ain't scared. He's a man playing amongst boys in terms of his physicality. He's got the skill set, power moves to the basket, could put the ball on the floor. I need him to be a little bit more ambidextrous. I need him to show a little bit of a perimeter game. I need him to shoot better from the free throw line. And oh, by the way, I need Griffin and Gentry to make sure, and I'm not saying they're not doing it, I'm just speaking, you know, just just, just in jest. You got to put the right pieces around Jeez, them, the and you got to coach in a fashion if you're Gentry that plays to his strength and sort of veers away from his weaknesses. Agreed, and I'm saying, but do you oh, believe that if those things are done, he could win a championship? I think he could, but here's my problem. As Max, the best the, player on the team. But that's what I'm saying. That's what I don't know. See, that's where I'm going. I'm saying to you, I know he's going to be great. Please don't get me wrong. Barkley was great. The question I'm asking, can they win with you being the number one option? I'm thinking you got to be a 1A. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a 1. I'm just thinking. I don't know, but that's where I'm leaning. All right, it's early yet. Uh, the Rockets won <laughs> last night, but Clint Capella was not on the floor. That's because he was in the process of getting traded to Atlanta. Massive deal. 14, 12 <clears throat> players, draft picks. Capella just 25, a double-double <clears throat> machine. He's been dogged by plantar fasciitis lately. The Rockets have actually played very well without him. According to our Bobby Marks, this 12-player trade is the biggest NBA deal since the Knicks moved Patrick Ewing to the Supersonics back in 2000. The two big names in the deal, Robert Covington, and Capella. Covington definitely fits what the Rockets were looking for as they go with a smaller lineup. Capella gives Atlanta the starting center they were looking for. Our ESPN senior NBA insider, Adrian Wojnarowski, has been reporting on the trade. Clint Capella is a nice play. He's a good center. Very good. So why were the Rockets willing to move from him and pick up a 3 and D guy in Covington? Well, they are all in on small ball. And Mike D'Antoni, you know, he's been moving toward this. And they believe that having another, you know, close to elite perimeter player, you know, who can certainly guard, you know, the big forwards, you know, the big swing forwards in the league, on the two lost two on the Lakers, on the Clippers, and who can shoot the three ball, that has more value than that center position. Uh, there's certainly some risk there, but between now and the trade deadline, the Rockets still may fortify that center position. Yeah, you talk about that because there's going to be a ripple effect with a deal that opens up a spot for you to make another deal. So where does this leave the Rockets with about 24 hours to go? Well, the Rockets have a window here between now and the trade deadline on Thursday uh, to take on a player who's making as much as $12 million a year or take assets on and, and, and move a player around, you know, that can improve this team. So they've got that window here. Uh, Daryl Morey, their GM, is continuing to work the phones and see if they can upgrade here by the trade deadline. And remember, the buyout market after the trade deadline is another avenue for them uh, to get bigger. Right now, if they were to start the playoffs, they're playing Utah and Rudy Gobert, and, and they certainly need some more size to go up against a center like that. You Absolutely. know, Houston active yesterday, and there's always other teams that perhaps are lying in wait. Are there other teams we should keep an eye on before the deadline? Well, one team with one player, the Knicks with Marcus Morris, there's a tremendous market for him. The Clippers, the Lakers would love to get him and then keep him away from the other. But Oklahoma City, they have, you know, if you want to go one-stop shopping for almost every position, you know, Danilo Gallinari at, at a forward, Steven Adams at center, Dennis Schroeder at guard. Uh, this is a team that has uh, a lot of assets available. Will they make a trade? I think right now Sam Presti, their GM, has a team that is in the playoffs that has probably overachieved. Billy Donovan's a Coach of the Year candidate. If he sees something where they can get some significant value back for any of those guys, they'll move them. But they can wait till the summer with most of these guys and then go at it again and see how this team can do in the postseason. All right, we'll see how the Thunder play this. We got basically 20, a little under 27 hours before the deadline. Woj's phone is charged up, ready to go. He'll be with us for the interim until we hit that deadline. 
Just to be, you know, amongst one of the guys that are named when you think about Boston is a blessing. And everything I do, everywhere I go, your name is kind of attached to uh, history. The Red Sox and Dodgers have agreed to a deal that would send star outfielder Mookie Betts to the Dodgers. It's a new day. All right, so since the start of the 2016 season, Mookie has been one of the best players in baseball. His 33.8 wins above replacement war during that span are second best in Major League Baseball. Only two, Mike Trout, who some people believe is one of the greatest players we've seen in the sport. ESPN MLB insider Jeff Passan broke the story yesterday. Passan, here's the deal. We know that there was some flirtation with this deal. We knew there was some heavy petting with this deal. It got done. How? It got done because ultimately the Los Angeles Dodgers showed the love that goes beyond the flirtation and the heavy petting by taking David Price's salary back along with Mookie Betts. And look, ultimately this was a money-driven deal for the Boston Red Sox. They knew that in order to not just reset under the $208 million luxury tax threshold, but really put themselves in a better financial position going forward and give them some more flexibility, that they needed to get rid of David Price's contract. And the easiest way to do that was to attach one of the five best players in baseball to it. And for the Dodgers, they, they knew this was a home run. They knew that the Dodgers wanted Mookie Betts, and they knew that the Dodgers had the money to go and pay him and Price. Okay, I'm trying to wrap my head around what you were just saying. It feels like you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. You've got one of the best players in baseball. Yep. You're a big money, big market team you like are. the Red Sox. Why would you not put your investment in Mookie Betts? Instead of looking for flexibility. It's a totally reasonable question. And I think the fairest answer right now is that the Boston Red Sox want to be what the Los Angeles Dodgers are. The Red Sox have some bad contracts on the book at this point, And they do not have a farm system worth speaking of right now. And it's one of the reasons that they hired Haim Bloom. Because he had done that down in Tampa Bay, just like his predecessor in the GM job, Andrew Friedman, who, of course, now runs the Los Angeles Dodgers. You need to have that mixture of young, low-paid players to balance out the higher salaried guys. But you can, you can argue that Mookie Betts is the best player to be in a Red Sox uniform since Ted Williams. Yeah. This is the guy that you yeah. go and pay. And for everyone in Boston who's angry about this right now, I totally understand, but this is something they felt like they had to do. Uh, the rebuild conversation, they, they just won the World Series in 2018. It's not going like to have been struggling for long. Either way, no manager, no Mookie Betts, no David Price, Jeff Passan. Things are good. Thank you. <laughs> I've been a player that over the last five years has batted 302 with 134 home runs and 119 stolen bases. Now, the comparisons to the curse of the Bambina will be inevitable. It's been exactly 100 years since the Red Sox sent another superstar away after six seasons for financial reasons. That time around, the Sox sent Babe Ruth to the Yankees for $125,000 in cash. Ruth, of course, was a pitcher then, but both he and Mookie Betts had World Series rings on their hands as they left Boston. It took the Red Sox over 80 years to win another after Ruth was traded. Boston fans certainly hoping for a much shorter wait this time around. Meanwhile, the Dodgers weren't done dealing. The addition of bets made for a crowded outfield, so the Dodgers turned around and traded Jock Peterson. No moving expenses necessary. Peterson just going down the freeway to the Angels in exchange for infielder Luis Renjifo. Peterson had 36 homers last year for the Dodgers. Don Van Natta Jr. reporting to Pete Rose today. Petition Commissioner Rob Manfred to have his name removed from baseball's ineligible list in hopes of being considered for induction into the Hall. Rose and his lawyers argue that Manfred hasn't punished steroid users and sign stealers as harshly as Rose was punished for gambling on baseball. Rose also petitioned Manfred in 2015 and was denied. Out of the NBA, Lakers beat the Spurs 129-102 behind LeBron's 36 points, included six three-pointers, five of which were made in the fourth quarter on his way to scoring 19 in the final quarter. James added nine assists, seven rebounds, while Anthony Davis and Kyle Kuzma added 18 points apiece as the Lakers beat San Antonio for the third time sweeping the season series. James Harden was on a heater, and you never walk away from a heater. Harden, 40 points and 11 assists. The shorthanded Rockets overcame an early deficit 
to beat the Hornets 125-110. Houston won its third straight, handing Charlotte its fourth consecutive loss and 12th in 13 games. In other Rocket-related news, Clint Capella goes to the Hawks in a mammoth 14-12 player deal, biggest in the NBA in two decades. The Rockets get a 3-and-D guy in Robert Covington as they double down on their small ball lineup. Atlanta adds a center to Trey Young and company, and the Hawks will likely have a top-five pick in the draft. So maybe something happening in Atlanta. In a college football shocker, Michigan State head coach Mark D'Antonio stepped down yesterday after 13 years of leading the Spartans. D'Antonio cited that after his own evaluation of the program that it was the right time to walk away. He added that it had nothing to do with the recent lawsuit that alleges recruiting violations. D'Antonio won three Big Ten titles, a Rose Bowl, and took Michigan State to the college football playoff. This is a good job in college football. A couple of names to keep an eye on. Luke Fickle of Cincinnati is going to be mentioned with it, as is Pat Narduzzi, who was the defensive coordinator at Michigan State, the pithead coach. We'll see if NCAA sanctions, which could happen, might scare some people.